Okay, um, we, we have a first question uh, that is, uh, has been uh, um, copy pasted in the chat, but maybe Monica, you want to go live and ask your question directly. So please open the mic and, uh, and go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much to all the speakers for your very, very inspiring talks. Um, as you know, here in Italy, uh, we are preparing a similar project uh, in, the, in the context of this uh, PNRR calls. And uh, we are um, coordinated by our department in, at, in Rome at CNR, the Department of Social Sciences and Humanities. And we decided to organize uh, ourselves, uh, the, 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 the Italian nodes of the all social science and humanity infrastructure as a cluster of the, the age and cultural heritage Italian nodes of Clarin, Daria, Iris and Operas. So we are preparing a project proposal as uh, this, uh, these four nodes. And we, uh, we were discussing last week, uh, together our colleagues, uh, um, about uh, the um, need to, uh, to, to develop, to implement uh, a um, common national hub, a common national marketplace uh, where to expose uh, our big, uh, uh, our data, our tools, uh, services, and also innovative, uh, uh, innovative uh, services. So uh, what I'd like to ask if, if you in text plus, if you plan to have this uh, national uh, German marketplace, uh, this common point for all the, the, the for all the text plus uh, uh, services, and if yes, uh, how you relate? Uh, how do you think to relate to the big, uh, to the international uh, shock and EOSC uh, marketplace? So this is my curiosity. So maybe I can start and maybe uh, Erhard is taking over then. Uh, so yes, uh, we would like to uh, yeah to install something like a marketplace. Although we haven't mentioned uh, uh, the term uh, marketplace in the strict sense, but all of our services should be offered uh, in a fair way and as also the um, uh, relation to the standards information system showed we are uh, we, we, we committed ourselves to use standards and we also have a look at all the european activities and this means that we um, offer these services to these international uh, organizations as well. And uh, since we are embedded in several uh, groups, uh, also the national research data infrastructures in uh, these coming 30 national research data infrastructure that will be established uh, from next year on, uh, work together, uh, exchange, and we try to use all the formats necessary and uh, uh, so that we are that yeah that we that we are able to to connect with uh, with all the other activities. But I give to Erhard now. Yeah, uh, Monica, thank you for this question. I think it's a very important one. As I um, already indicated um, at the beginning of my presentation. Um, uh, one of the goals of the NFDI as a whole is to connect to uh, initiatives, not just nationally, but also internationally. And uh, we have a number of uh, centers within Text Plus, or as we call them, uh, thematic clusters, uh, that are, for example, participating in SHOC uh, and in other preparatory measures uh, for uh, EOSC. Um, so, uh, by uh, yeah, I would just emphasize what Andreas already said, 
uh, we will definitely uh, collaborate uh, with these um, <clears throat> uh, ongoing activities. And I think this is also another point of contact uh, or continuous uh, point of contact between uh, Clarin, uh, Daria, and, and Tex Plus. Um, the, uh, I, I just want to sort of pick up on the notion of a hub. Um, so we are commit committed also, and uh, we are not by no means uh, the only one who is committed to a distributed infrastructure. So we are not um, uh, aiming for, say, one physical uh, national data center. In fact, this is a belief and a strategy that's shared throughout the NFDI. And this has quite a number of reasons, but one of them, of course, also has to do with, again, legal issues um, and uh, also uh, with the type of funding that we have been given. Uh, it would take too, too much time and uh, to explain this in detail, but uh, we, I'm sure, would be happy to, to explain it to you in more detail offline. And uh, so, uh, and this is, again, something that uh, we uh, kind of uh, adopt from our previous heritage within Clarin that uh, we need to make sure uh, that we have uh, the right registries, uh, that we have uh, the right um, services and, uh, and auth authentication uh, systems uh, in place uh, so that there's, for the user in a sense, uh, it won't matter much uh, uh, that this is a distributed infrastructure uh, and that they have a good uh, sort of user experience in accessing all the data as, as, uh, and the services, as Andreas already mentioned. So I think in a nutshell, that's our strategy, and but that's also our uh, vision of, uh, uh, you know, collaborating on the European scale. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. This is, uh, this is very interesting. And uh, yeah, I think it also connects to the fact that uh, uh, on the one hand, you have to de develop national service, national resources, but also for the German resource researchers, as, as will be for the Italian ones, uh, uh, it is also important to be able to access to resources that are offered uh, elsewhere. And uh, so reduplicate all uh, the points of access at the national level may not be always the best, uh, the best option. Um, are there any other questions? Um, I might have one uh, for uh, um, Thorsten, I think. Uh, so we are a little bit uh, curious, of course, in, in Claren, we are very interested in training activities right now. And uh, so um, what, maybe you can elaborate a bit more on uh, your plans there. And uh, so, as you know, we, we have this uh, Teach with Claren section the, of our portal that we are developing. We, we run calls. Um, yeah, there's a, actually, a question from Juliana, our training officer, that is, I will integrate in what I'm saying now. So uh, basically, we are collecting and trying to make um, training materials that are produced uh, for, from uh, national consortia more visible. And uh, we came across also this uh, Clarin, Claria DE tutorial finder um, that was put in the chat. So uh, what's going on there? Are, uh, what is the... Uh, destiny of this uh, of these services and how they, they, we can integrate them a little bit in Claren. Thank you for this question. So we are really interested in, in um, teaching and educating our uh, our uh, the group of people who are involved with Clary in and um, and contribute to the Clarin community on the European scale. Um, many of us, so we are part of the community, as I mentioned before, so many of um, the um, participants of Text Plus are uh, also involved in teaching, and very often we see that um, some material that we, uh, that we have can be shared among the different groups, and it's worthwhile to reuse the material. Now we are independent partners, so the, the key concept uh, which 
nicely relates to the previous answer is always to have an interface. So, so have an, a, a way of interconnecting the different services and the different players. The tutorial finder that you see, for example, was uh, um, uh, integrating uh, various ideas from the Clarin and from the Daria community, uh, integrating tutorials available um, just as uh, PDF files um, that could be reused. Uh, but on the same uh, side, uh, you will find uh, YouTube tutorials, etc., as well. And we integrated also recommended courses from uh, some of our European partners there. Um, one of the key issues when, when, when you're working with such an, a system is always the question of scalability. So how can we make sure that even if 20, 30 other partners join the network uh, can contribute uh, their ideas and it will show up and at the same time, of course, making sure that it's not spoiled by uh, 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 spam providers. So uh, one of the so as a distributed network text plus will engage uh, in various teaching uh, activities and we will probably build upon the um, ideas that we have, for example, with the tutorial finder or also something that we had before in Clarin, uh, where we had um, a list of uh, a, 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 a list of tutorials and uh, teaching materials, and of course we also connect to the uh, uh, European level there as well. Um, but we are not there yet that we have very concrete plans on how to do that. But we will definitely do that. Yeah, and uh, of course you. Get in touch uh, anytime you need the input from us. Erhard, um, you wanted to maybe add a... Yeah, just a couple of uh, uh, additional pointers. So uh, the professional organizations that are part of Claring, so we collaborate very closely, for example, with the uh, uh, German Studies Association or different philologies, uh, also Romance, Linguistics, French, Italian, Spanish, and so on. Uh, they are a very important uh, conduit uh, for this activity. So we often get asked to uh, also do presentations at their annual meetings of various kinds. And uh, this is a very good, uh, effective way to, uh, you know, reach the membership of these associations. Um, also then uh, particularly, uh, you know, uh, uh, junior researchers. So this is something uh, that we have done already in the last few years and will definitely continue it. One question that came up early on was um, what should be the right mix between sort of general purpose, very broad themes uh, of, um, you know, training uh, and dissemination and uh, to what extent should we kind of particularize it to our data domains? Um, we at least concluded um, for the time being that uh, there is more demand on more specialized uh, kinds of activities. So, um, and this is already ongoing. So there have been a, a number of um, dissemination events, actually was one just last, last week uh, in Göttingen uh, for the area of additions where, you know, we offer very uh, clear, uh, you know, um, pointers on how to use our services, what is involved in building a digital edition, et cetera, et cetera. So this is our initial strategy, but of course, uh, this doesn't mean that we will not also uh, have more uh, general tutorials, uh, for example, on legal aspects or standardization, right? So it'll be sort of a bouquet of things that uh, we want to develop. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I think that Bente has uh, raised her, her hand. Uh, maybe she wanted to add uh, or comment. Well, yeah, thank you very much. This was uh, very, very interesting, uh, I think, uh, as already other people have said. And I'm not sure I'm totally have understood everything. I, I had a few questions about the organizational parts. Um, as I understand, uh, understood from Erhard's first uh, presentation, you are not supposed to further develop 
uh, resources and tools, you are rather uh, supposed to make them interoperable and to, to focus on that. So I suppose that, I mean, you cannot stay with what you have. Of course, things need to be further developed and you need more resources. So I understand that this would have to come from other sources, from other funding. That was one thing, yeah. And I see Erhard nodding. Uh, but I also suppose that you don't get all of the funding that's needed for this uh, uh, project for Text Plus from the uh, uh, German Research Council's uh, research funding. I suppose that there's also some kind of co-funding from the institutions involved. Would you want to tell a little bit about how much that is? Thank you. Yeah, I can. I can briefly uh, answer that. Uh, in fact, I'm very glad, Bente, that you asked this question because it sort of sounded like we were going to be frozen in time forever with the resources that we have right now. Yeah. No, the division of labor is indeed that that's where our own funding comes in. Okay, so the institutions will be responsible for maintaining uh, and hopefully also uh, further uh, expanding their um, uh, their uh, data and their services. Okay. Uh, but it's the, the government uh, provides only integration funds, so to speak. Now, um, there has been uh, quite a bit of preparatory work uh, by a council called uh, the uh, uh, Rat für Informationsinfrastrukturen, uh, RFII. Uh, they were sort of charged with laying the groundwork for this whole, uh, for this whole national initiative. And uh, they very early uh, on said that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, those who will be funded should also seek additional funds from additional, uh, you know, funding institutions, and they are encouraging us to do that, right? So we can still apply for targeted actions, for example, for a particular data domain or particular technology and so on, right? So uh, this is by no means the only avenue for uh, advancing uh, uh, infrastructures at the national level, right? And of course, that again will be a competitive process, but of course, it also helps if you can already s say that you've been evaluated within the national uh, 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 infrastructure as a whole. So this is uh, kind of also at this point, you know, at this uh, perspective, it's a very open kind of process. Uh, where you can, uh, you know, um, uh, seek additional funding, but it's very important that uh, for uh, issues of sustainability, uh, that you also have a very strong institutional uh, commitment. And uh, this is, of course, much easier uh, for large libraries, uh, for academies than for ind individual uh, universities. So. Uh, I mean, I have two hats on here in this uh, regard, and uh, I think one has to be realistic, but I would also uh, say that uh, an NFDI couldn't really exist and flourish uh, without a very strong role by the universities, because they are, after all, uh, where teaching and research happens and often also where innovation is uh, taking place. This is not to say that this is not do done outside the universities, but uh, the universities uh, continue to have a, a strong role. That's, that's also very clear. Um, yeah, I see I raised hand by Francisca, uh, so please. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, uh, in, yeah, I can only repeat, uh, thanks for the very interesting presentations and the insights uh, that you shared with us. Um, I, I would like to hear a little bit about uh, how you think uh, the Nifty model, uh, and maybe in particular the uh, Text Plus instantiation, uh, will be able to balance the um, dynamics and, and the uh, incentives in the national context with the part of the disciplinary dynamics that, that can only flourish if, if it is it takes an international dimension, uh, European and beyond. Because as you just described, the, the model is set up in a, in a federated manner. So the various institutes uh, within the country play a role in the sustainability of the services that are 
being offered. But of course, for the future, we need to make sure, at least uh, the community as a whole needs to make sure that the international collaboration can also um, grow and flourish. Yeah, but one, one of the uh, aims of this association uh, is to allow um, the connection uh, between uh, the national network and uh, larger international activities. Uh, but there are also um, there's also the point that um, all of the um, partners within Text Plus work internationally. So we are not isolated. So we are, all these research institutions uh, work together in in international context. But from the organizational point of view. Uh, both this association uh, that uh, links uh, the Clarion Eric with the national partners in in Germany is uh, a key um, figure and um, a key point, and also the um, the linkage of uh, of Text Plus to the European infrastructures, as uh, Erhard uh, mentioned in his slides, with the uh, aim to uh, to to be active in EOSC and so on. But I can also give to Erhard, who would probably also add to this. Uh, yeah, Francisca, I'm not, not quite sure whether I'm answering your question, but another aspect that we had to grapple with very early on, as I mentioned, was how many consortia is it realistic uh, to incorporate into the national research data infrastructure? One possible answer would have been 12. And uh, that's because if you look at the, uh, at the um, uh, web page of the uh, DFG, the German uh, sort of the German counterpart of NVO or the more sort of uh, funding agencies that uh, deal with uh, basic research, if you look under the humanities, there are 12 different sections. Uh, but that was, of course, not realistic, right? Because um, uh, we figured that it might be uh, possible to fund about four or five, but definitely not 12. So um, that was uh, a, a kind of learning process, I think, in this workshop series that I briefly mentioned that we held in the humanities ahead of time. Actually, I need to brag a little bit about the humanities here, okay? Um, because uh, many of the other uh, branches of, of science that now also incorporated uh, NFDI consortia didn't do this legwork ahead of time. They said, well, you know, our field is so important, of course, we're going to have an NFDI consortium. And some of them were actually quite surprised that uh, this wasn't a no brainer for the review panels. So it was very important to have a strategy. And uh, in the end, uh, the humanities, I think, broadly uh, took the, uh, the, uh, the stance that it would be better to organize things around clusters of research data. So, uh, we thought that it would be uh, inconceivable, actually, to have a national uh, research data infrastructure without uh, addressing textual data. Okay, and this, of course, also extends beyond uh, the uh, textual data that are used in the humanities. But you need uh, to have a strategy for data mining, for example, and that largely uh, centers around. Uh, textual data. So uh, this was actually also one of the recommendations of this Council for Research Data Infrastructures that I just mentioned, that we should really look at the instruments that will be needed to deal with research data as broadly as possible. Yeah? And so uh, in the end, that's, uh, I think, a good outcome, and I'm, I'm really happy about it. Uh, that we managed to come to an understanding uh, within the humanities, uh, how to sort of sensibly divide up the pie. And I'm not talking about money here, 
but no. I'm talking about uh, the types of research data. Yeah. Um, so, uh, of course, there will still be sort of disciplines that fall between uh, different, uh, you know, uh, initiatives. Clusters. Yeah. And so you have to deal with that and you have to be aware and, and form alliances. I'll just give a, a short, for instance, um, there is, uh, again, in the academy world, uh, inscriptions are uh, a very important kind of artifact that, uh, you know, uh, people collect and study. And uh, this goes way beyond the Rosetta Stone or what have you, right? So who, who, who owns them? Right, I'm being a bit facetious here. Uh, is that owned by Text Plus? Is it owned by the archaeologist or NFTI for object? Is it owned by the historians? And the answer is not owned by anybody. And the only way you can really do justice to the, this kind of hybrid uh, uh, cultural object is by collaborating on their analysis. Right. So there's language part. There is uh, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, you use something like the TEI and, and other uh, standards to um, address the language part. But then, of course, you also need archaeologists, you need historians that contextualize these objects within their cultural setting where they were first, um, uh, you know, developed and then, uh, you know, uh, gained okay. uh, an important status in, in cultural heritage. So I yeah. think this is if the, I think this is actually a wonderful thing, right? I, I agree with you, Erard, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. I think we should yeah, look at the, mm -hmm. at the clock, but I agree with you. And I, I can only hope that this model, uh, that we as a field are able to model, to use this model also in international context. So the SSH collaboration is one of the strongest in terms of clusters in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, I also know something similar has happened in the Netherlands, but uh, uh, I assume there are other places. So my hope is that if you learn any lessons that we can share them also in a European context. Thanks a lot. So in the interest of time, I think that there is a, a one last question, maybe with a quick answer in the chat. Uh, 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 about I, the role so of quite I, quickly, yes. I think I can answer quite quickly. Um, as there is a, in the chat a question on the collaboration with libraries. Yes, we we collaborate with libraries uh, since extreme important partners, uh, the state as uh, the National Library of Germany and uh, uh, state uh, and University Library of Göttingen are core partners and. For us, uh, the connection with libraries and, in a way, content owners, uh, uh, as it is written in in, in quotes, uh, is quite important for us, definitely. If there are no other questions or remarks, I would like to thank so once again uh, uh, today's uh, organize the organizers of today's cafe uh, for this very very interesting overview on uh, this new text plus uh, initiative. Uh, just a couple of quotes, closing uh, words. Uh, if you so, if you want to get uh, to know Clarin better, uh, the best way is to join our news flash. Here's the link. Uh, and to check out uh, our other events, uh, including the Clarin Cafes. Uh, I mentioned the uh, calls, the open funding opportunities uh, that Clarin uh, uh, makes uh, available for members of our national consortia, so also including, of course, Germany. So you can find them under funding opportunities. And uh, uh, we haven't still got a topic for the next cafe, so it will be announced. And uh, meanwhile, you can stay tuned uh, also uh, by checking our Twitter account. So uh, thanks, uh, thank you all very much again for attending.